Welcome to this chapter. We're going to talk about plant assets and how we depreciate them. Talk about natural resources and how they get depleted and intangible assets and how they get amortized. So we're going to depreciate, deplete, and amortize. And then we'll look at the financial statement uh, presentation. Uh, plant assets include things like land, land improvements, building equipment, uh, major characteristics. It's something that's used in the operations and it's not for resale. So if we buy real estate with the intent on reselling it, then we're not using it in the operations and we would not depreciate it. Um, it's long term in nature and usually depreciated and it possesses physical substance. Um, referred to as property, plant, and equipment, plant, equipment, fixed assets, so whatever, all those things mean the same thing as you're, if you're in the accounting world. Land, uh, and it's important to note here that land doesn't get depreciated because we don't use land up. Uh, but land includes all the costs to acquire it and get it ready for use. A typical cost would be the purchase price, a closing cost. Um, when, you, when you buy property you have closing costs that might have a title search fee or an abstract fee and an attorney's fees. Any commissions you pay to real estate brokers. Uh, if you have to do some land preparation like grading, uh, filling in some low spots, uh, putting drainage in, and clearing it, uh, those would all be part of the cost of land. Then anything, any assumption of, <coughs> of debts against a building would be part of the cost. So we've got an illustration here. Assume that Hayes Manufacturing Company acquires real estate at a cash cost of $100,000. So we're out of pocket $100,000 as cash cost. The property contains an old warehouse that is raised, that's torn down, at a net cost of $6,000. It cost $7,500 to tear it down. We had $1,500 of things that we could salvage out of there, so net cost is $6,000. Additionally, we had to pay an attorney $1,000, and we had to pay a real estate broker's commission of $8,000. So the cost of land is $115,000, and we compute it like this. Cash price of property $100,000, the old warehouse at a cost of $6,000, attorney's fees at a cost of $1,000, and then the real estate broker's commission of $8,000 gives us a total of 115000 um, So again, we don't depreciate land, so we'll carry this asset on the books uh, forever until we dispose of the land. And we'll, and we'll carry it at the $115,000. Land improvement uh, includes all expenditures necessary to make the improvements ready for their intended use. So examples are driveways, uh, parking lots, fences, landscaping, underground sprinklers. Uh, these items uh, do have a limited useful life. Driveways don't last forever, though they last a long time. Parking lots, fences, landscaping, underground sprinklers all uh, get used up over a period of time. So limited useful life, and we go ahead and expense them via depreciation over the cost of, the, uh, of their useful life. Buildings includes all costs related directly to purchase or construction. Uh, purchase costs, a lot of things we looked at for land, the purchase price, closing costs, attorney's fees, title insurance, etc., and real estate broker's commission. Uh, remodeling and replacing or repairing uh, the roof, floors, electrical wiring, and plumbing. When you do those things up front as part of the purchase to get it ready for use, then they become capitalized, they become part of the cost of the asset, and we depreciate it. If we're building something, it's a contract price plus payments for architect fees, building permits, excavation costs, and the list goes on. Equipment includes all costs incurred in acquiring the equipment, preparing it for use. So purchase price, sales tax on the item, freight handling charges, Insurance on equipment while it's in transit, uh, cost to assemble and install it, 
and then uh, if we need to do some uh, trial runs and testing of the product to make sure it's in place and working, that would be part of the equipment cost. Another example here with Merton Company, they purchased factory machinery at a cash price of 50000 Related expenditures are sales tax 3000 insurance during shipping the 500 Excuse me, and then installing and testing a thousand dollars. So the amount to be determined uh, as the cost of the machinery, the cash price of fifty thousand, sales tax of three thousand, five hundred dollars insurance, and a thousand dollar installation testing. So our total cost of machinery, fifty four five. I'm going to go ahead and depreciate the cost of that machine. Depreciation is a process of allocating the cost of tangible asset to, to expense in a systematic and rational manner for those periods expected to benefit from the use of the asset. Boy, well, isn't that a sentence a mouthful? But in the way I talk, uh, depreciation is a method of spreading the cost of the asset out over its expected useful life. We buy a machine that's going to make uh, mouse pads, and we expect the machine will make mouse pads for five years. So, if the machine costs a hundred thousand dollars, we want to write it off over that five-year period. And we need to do it in a systematic and rational manner. We can't just wake up one day and say, "Oh, I guess we'll take depreciation this year of thirty thousand, and next year say, oh, I think." We'll just take 5,000. You know, we need to have a uh, systematic, rational approach to it. So it's a process of cost allocation. It's not an asset valuation. Um, you know, and unfortunately, that tends to make balance sheets somewhat less than useful. Um, but we're trying to amortize, to depreciate the cost of this asset over its useful life. We're not trying to go out and get an appraisal every year for it. So keep that in mind. It's a process of cost allocation, not asset valuation. So if you look at the balance sheet and you have X amount for fixed assets, um, that chances are the assets aren't worth that amount. They may be more or less, but they're not worth that amount. Depreciation applies to land improvements, buildings, and equipment, not land. Depreciable because the revenue producing ability of an asset will decline over the asset's use of life. Almost all assets uh, decline and decline gradually. I'm trying to think off the top of my head here of something that just collapses on the set. It's useful, 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 and all of a sudden it's shot. I always like to pick on hog. All uh, confinement buildings, you know, they work and work and work, and all of a sudden they're bad. You know, they they rotted out, they've rusted out, something's happened. Uh, I'm sure the purists would say, "Well, what was a gradual decline?" Okay, so factors in computing depreciation. We we'll look at the cost, uh, initial cost, everything to get to buy the asset, get it in place, and ready to use. Look, we need to know the useful life, and that's going to be an estimate because we don't know exactly. And then we also need to do an estimate of the salvage value. What will this asset be worth at the end of its useful life? Um, most assets are worth something, although sometimes uh, it's such a piece of junk we actually have to pay to have somebody haul it away. In which case, you'd give it a zero salvage. Depreciation methods. The objective is to select a method that best measures an asset's contribution to revenue over its useful life. Now, again, that's a mouthful, but the asset's contribution to revenue over its useful life. We bought this piece of equipment because we're going to make mouse pads with it. We generate revenue by making by selling mouse pads. So we're trying to figure out. Uh, how to write off, how to expense the cost of that equipment over the revenue that it generates. Um, 
straight line method and in the little pie chart the bottom right hand uh, corner of the screen you're saying 88% of the uh, of this of their survey of 600 large US companies use straight line units of activity method uh, which could be hours or miles or some other measurement activity and then there's a declining balance method. So we're going to take a look at all, at those three methods. There's some there's some extra or some other methods that we're not going to focus on. The government actually has a method you can use for income tax purposes called the modified accelerated cost recovery, which is not good for tax purposes. And there's there is an older method that I don't see around much anymore called sum of the year's digits. Okay, example. Barb's Florist purchased a small delivery truck on January 1, 2012. Cost $13,000, and they estimate that uh, this has a five year useful life, and at the end of five years, this truck will still be worth $1,000. They also estimate that uh, we'll get 100,000 miles on the truck. Now, those of us who know that trucks are getting pretty good mileage, and, and we probably, in my mind, 100,000 is pretty low. But let's assume that we, it's just an estimate, we don't know what it'll actually get, and maybe this truck gets really hard use. So straight line, and if we do a straight line depreciation, the expense is the same amount for each year. Depreciable cost is the cost of the asset plus its salvage value. So we have $12,000 here that we need to depreciate. And we're going to divide it by five years and come up with $2,400 per year of depreciation. So in 2012, our depreciable cost is $12,000. The rate is 20% comes up with $2,400 the first year, and our accumulated depreciation then at the end of the first year is $2,400. Our book value is to $13,000 minus to $2,400, or $10,600. Everybody see where we got the $10,600 from? This asset cost is $13,000. We said we're going to have a salvage value of 1000 so we have 12000 to depreciate. If we take our cost, our 13000 minus the accumulated depreciation, 2400 we get to the 10600 The next year, I'm sorry, the journal entry for 2012 is debit depreciation expense, credit accumulated depreciation. And that will be the same journal entry we'll make each year. Next year, Same annual expense. Our accumulated depreciation goes from 2,800 to 4,800, and our book value then is the 13,000 minus the 4,800 dollars, which nets out to 8,200. You'll remember that accumulated depreciation is a contra asset account. Year 2014, same thing. Accumulated depreciation grows by 2,400. Book value decreases by 2400. Year 15. Year 2016, the fifth year. We fully depreciated it. Uh, we're down to 12. We accumulated depreciations at $12,000. We have $1,000 left in our book value, and that's what we think. Our salvage value is so we haven't depreciated it below salvage, we depreciated it down to salvage value. Units of activity the company estimates total units activity and calculate depreciation cost per unit. Expenses vary based on units of activity, in other words, how much did we use the asset this year, and then depreciable cost is cost less salvage value. So that last part's the same as the straight line. So we have a depreciable cost of $12,000, total 
total units of activity is 100,000 miles. So that works out to 12 cents per mile. So if in the first year you drove 15,000 miles, you take the 12 cents a mile times the 15,000 miles, you come up with annual depreciation expense of 18. You know, in addition to miles, the other common units of operation would either be units produced or hours used. If our if our machine that makes mouse pads is supposed to crank out the two million mouse pads over its life, and the first year we crank out the two hundred thousand mouse. We could compute depreciation based on the 200,000 miles pads. The other method, uh, the other factor here is frequently hours. A lot of the equipment gets uh, depreciated based on number of hours. So that's something like a forklift or a bobcat or a tractor. You look at how many hours that it equipment is operated during a given year, and you look at the total number of hours that we expect that equipment to operate. I think airplanes depreciated the same way. So example here of the truck, 2012 we had 15,000 miles, our rate we computed was 12 cents a mile, so the annual expense is 1800 That amount goes into cumulative depreciation, and our book value is now 11200 $13,000 cost minus the $1,800 cumulative depreciation. Our journal entry is depreciation expense and credit cumulative depreciation for $1,800. It's a debit to depreciation expense, credit to cumulative depreciation. Year 2013, we actually drove 30,000 miles, 12 cents a mile, annual expense is $3,600. Our cumulative depreciation grows to $5,400. And book value is seventy six hundred. Again, book value is to thirteen thousand dollars minus the fifty four hundred in accumulated depreciation. Year two thousand fourteen, we drove twenty thousand miles. Year two thousand fifteen, we drove twenty five thousand miles. Year two thousand sixteen, we drove ten thousand miles. And weren't we lucky? We drove exactly 100,000 miles over those five years. Now, obviously, in real life, that never happens. But in counting textbooks, sometimes crazy things happen. So declining balance method, uh, frequently called the double declining balance, uh, decreasing the annual depreciation expense over the asset's useful life. Declining balance rate is double the straight line rate rates applied to book value. Before the rate was applied to the depreciable value, the thirteen thousand minus the thousand dollar salvage, now it's applied to book value. And book value changes at the end of every year. The assumption with declining balance method is that the asset is more productive early in its life. And as the asset get, gets older, it, it's less productive, generates less revenue. Illustration: um, the book value is thirteen thousand, and our declining balance rate. We're going to take uh, one and divide it by five, which gives us twenty percent. We're going to double it to get to forty. So our first year depreciation is 40% times 13,000, 5,200. That amount goes in cumulative depreciation, and that 5,200 gets subtracted from 13,000 to come up with a book value of 7,800. Now next year, our beginning book value is the 7,800. The rate's the same. We take 40% of 7,800, get 3,120. Accumulated depreciation becomes 8,320. The book value.
value declines to 4680. Guess what? Start 2014, our book value is now 4680, same rate. Decre annual expense is 1872, cumulative depreciation is 10192, the book value is at 2808. We're getting close to the thousand here, but we're not there yet. With a thousand dollar salvage value. So year 2015, our expense is 11,023, our accumulated depreciation is 11,315, and our book value is 1685. So when we take in in, the, in your last year, we take our 40% times the 1685, we come up with 674. But we want to actually get it. We want to get our book value to $1,000. So we force that uh, dollar amount in there of 685 to do that. So keep that in mind. Last year on a declining balance method, probably the annual expense is a plugged figure when we had to compute based on the book value how much expense did we need to get to the salvage value. So the journal entry for the first year would have been debit depreci depreciation expense and credit to accumulated depreciation of 5200 The next five slides are included to illustrate the calculation of partial year depreciation expense. The amounts are consistent with what example we've been using. Uh, obviously, people don't buy assets just on the first day of the year. They buy them throughout the year, and we need to take that into account when we're doing depreciation. So we're saying here, assume Barb Flores bought the delivery truck on October 1st instead of January. So we would have it uh, just three months out of the year, or a quarter of the year, instead of the entire year. <coughs> so in 2010, we take the $12,000 times our rate of 20% because it's annual depreciation of 2400 But the first year we just had it three twelfths, or a quarter of the year. So our depreciation expense in the first year is 600 Accumulated depreciation is 600. Uh, years 2, 3, 4, and 5 are the same $2,400. But in the last year, 2015, we're going to take the 12,000 times the 20%, uh, gives us the $2,400, and then we take 9 twelfths of it to get it to 1800 Now, if you add up current year expense, you come up to $12,000. You know exactly where you were. So we just took the first year and last year's depreciation and uh, adjusted it for the partial year. We don't need to do that with units of activity method because we weren't we don't care when we bought it. We just care in this case how many uh, miles we drove it, how many hours this machinery operated. Declining balance uh, is. The first year we need to make an adjustment, and then the rest of the time we do business as usual. So in 2010, $13,000 times our 40% gives us $5,200 in expense. And we take a quarter of that, $1,300, for our first year's depreciation. So that gives us a book value at the beginning of 2011 of 11700 and then we're back to our typical formula. We do come up with a plug figure um, in year 2015, and that's $516. So we don't depreciate it below salvage value. If we had taken the $607 that we've computed, that would have put us below salvage value. So we cut it off at 516. 
of Internal Revenue Service does not require taxpayers to use the same depreciation method on tax returns as financial statements. In fact, Congress uh, frequently has wanted to encourage businesses to make investments in capital assets. So it's encouraged businesses to write the assets off faster using this modified accelerated cost recovery system. Revising periodic depreciation, uh, we account for it in the period of the change in future periods that we're going to make. At some point, it becomes evident that our estimate was wrong and we need to change our estimate. We bought the truck, thought it was only going to last 100,000 miles. Guess what? It's still running like a top at 100,000 miles. Uh, we thought the truck would be used up in five years and, and it's still good. Or Maybe it's a piece of junk after two years. So we don't handle them retrospectively. We don't handle them looking back. We just keep looking at it going forward. And it's not considered an error. You know, it was a, uh, we missed an estimate. It wasn't an uh, error. So we'll keep going. Barb's florist again. They decide on January 1, 2013 to extend the useful life truck one year because of its excellent condition. Companies use the straight line method to depreciate the asset to date. Book value is $5,800. What's the journal entry correct prior year's depreciation? There isn't one because we don't need to correct it. And to calculate depreciation expense for 2013, <coughs> take our book value at uh, January 1st, 2013. Still have thousand dollar salvage value. We didn't change that part of our estimate, so we have forty eight hundred. We think we have three years left on this. We should have annual depreciation of sixteen hundred dollars. That's for our standard journal entry. Then we get in the question of whether whether a repair, whether an expenditure, is for a repair pair and should be expensed immediately <clears throat> or whether this expenditure uh, should be depreciated does it in uh, in the tester you know really does it increase the value of the asset does it increase the life of the asset or is it just uh, something you have to do to keep going <clears throat> So expenditure is to maintain the operating efficiency and productive life of the unit. We go ahead and debit uh, repair or maintenance expense, and they're called revenue expenditures. Things that are addition improvements, cost incurred to increase the operating efficiency, productive capacity, or useful life of an asset. We debit the plan asset uh, and credit or cash probably, but those are referred to as capital expenditures. Um, lots of times these are gray areas, just not ever clear. Uh, with some, sometimes it isn't clear what something is. Companies dispose of plant assets in three ways. They retire them, we sell them or you exchange them. Uh, first thing you do is bring depreciation up to date. Bring it up to the date of the disposal. Then you're going to eliminate the asset by debiting accumulated depreciation and crediting the asset account. And then we'll look to see wherever we had a gain or loss on it and any salvage value. So assume that Hobart Enterprises retires its computer printers. The computer printers cost $32,000. They have accumulated depreciation on these of $32,000. So the journal entry to record the retirement is debit accumulated depreciation and credit printing equipment for $32,000. And that wipes out both those accounts. Assume that the Sunset Company discards delivery equipment that costs 18000 
and has a cumulated depreciation of 14000 What's the journal entry? Again, we debit accumulated depreciation 14, debit loss, and credit delivery equipment 18,000. So we use this thing up faster than we estimated. Um, so we have a loss when we finally dispose of it. And the loss on disposal shows up in the other expenses and losses section of the income. Say all the plan assets, compare the book value of the asset with the proceeds received from the sale. If the proceeds exceed the book value, then you have a gain. If we got less for it than the book value, then we've got a loss. But again, the first thing you do is update your depreciation. <clears throat> Assume that on July 1st, 2010, the right company sells off its furniture for 16000 cash. The office furniture originally cost sixty thousand. As of January first, two thousand and ten, it had accumulated depreciation of forty one thousand. Depreciation for the first six months of the year was eight thousand dollars. Prepare a journal entry to record depreciation expense up to the date of sale. That's our standard one, debit depreciation expense, credit accumulated depreciation for eight thousand. How much do we have in accumulated depreciation now? We've got the forty-one thousand they told us about plus the eight thousand total forty-nine. So we do our computation here: cost of equipment on the books is sixty thousand, less accumulated depreciation of forty-nine. We have a book value at the date of the sale, date of disposal of eleven thousand, and we're receiving sixteen thousand. We have a gain of five thousand dollars. So to record that, we get the asset accumulated depreciation off the books, record the gain, and record the cash. Very straightforward. Uh, you know, if you remember, update the depreciation, and then just do a comparison of the proceeds from the book value. Figure out if you got a gain or a loss. Gains, as you might suspect, are like revenue. They are, they have a credit balance. And losses have a debit balance. Natural resources uh, consist of standing timber, underground deposits of oil, gas, mineral. There's a bunch of other natural resources. They're physically extracted in operations and are replaceable only by an act. God, nature created oil, um, timber, gas. That's how they get replaced. So the cost is the price needed to acquire the resource and prepare it for its intended use. Depletion is the allocation of the cost to expense in a rational, systematic manager manner over resource of useful life. So depletion is to natural resources as depreciation is to plant assets. Companies generally use a units of activity method. Um, you know, we have X number of uh, tons of coal, and we mined uh, so many thousand units this year. That becomes our units of activity. So assume that the Lane Coal Company invests $5 million in a mine estimated up to 10 million tons of coal and has no salvage value. In the first year, Lane extracts mines, that is, and sells 800,000 tons of coal. Lane computes the depletion expense as follows. $5 million divided by the 10 million tons gives us a 50 cent depletion, depletion cost per ton. So if the first year we took out 800,000 tons, we multiply to 50 cents times that and get 400,000 depreciation. So the journal entry here is a debit to depletion expense and a credit to accumulated depletion. Accumulated depletion is just like accumulated depreciation. It's a uh, contra asset account. So it shows up on the balance sheet as coal mine, $5 million dollars. Less accumulated depreciation of four hundred thousand, and it nets out to be four million six hundred thousand.
Intangible assets are things you can't kick. The rights, privileges, competitive advantages that don't have a physical substance. Uh, intangible assets are categorized as having either a limited life or an indefinite life. Um, probably most of them are limited life. Common types of intangibles, patents, copyrights, franchises, and license, trademarks or trade names, and goodwill. I guess trademarks or trade names might have a uh, kind of indefinite life. Some franchises or license might have, but the rest of them probably have limited life. How we value it, uh, if, if we purchase the intangible, it's uh, pretty easy to be reported at cost. It includes all costs necessary to make the intangible asset ready for its intended use, which probably means some legal fees and maybe some uh, attorney fees to defend the title to this intangible asset. Uh, internally created intangibles uh, are generally expensed uh, and only capitalized in direct cost incurred in perfecting a title to the intangible, such as legal costs. As, you know, as a general rule, you're not going to have many internally created uh, intangible assets. Patents. Uh, amortization of intangibles. If it's a limited life intangible, then we amortize it to expense. We have to again have to use some kind of systematic approach to do that. And we credit the asset account or an accumulated amortization account. Normally, uh, intangibles aren't a big item on the balance sheet, and we're not as worried about uh, the Ness uh, balance sheet presentation for them. Uh, indefinite life intangibles with, with no foreseeable limit on time the assets expect to provide cash flows, uh, and we don't uh, amortize it. We don't uh, we don't reduce it in value. We keep it there. Patents. Exclusive right to manufacture, sell, or otherwise control an invention for a period of 20 years from the date of the patent. Uh, we capitalize cost of purchasing a patent and amortize over its 20-year life or its useful life, whatever, whichever is shorter. Uh, if we have our own R&D program, and R&D here is research and development, uh, we expense any R&D cost in developing a patent. Legal fees incurred in successfully defending a patent could be capitalized to a patent account. The illustration here assume that National Labs purchases a patent at a cost of sixty thousand. We estimate the useful life to be eight years. Our annual amortization then looks like this: debit to amortization expense seventy five hundred, and credit to patent. You could also do an accumulated uh, amortization patent, but they're taking it right out of patent here. Copyrights. Give the owner the exclusive right to reproduce and sell an artistic or published work, plays, literary works, musical works, pictures, photographs, and video and audiovisual material. Copyrights granted for the life of the creator plus 70 years. And that uh, those time frames have changed periodically over the years. It used to be a little shorter, and now it's a little longer. Uh, so we capitalize acquisition cost if we if we buy a copyright, and then we amortize it to expense over the useful life. Trademarks, trade names, uh, word, phrase, jingle, symbol. Wheaties, Game Boy, Frappuccino, Kleenex, Windows, Coca Cola, and Jeep. Uh, all are you know, pretty darn familiar names. Uh, trademark or trade name has legal protection for indefinite number of 20 year renewal periods. So, an indefinite number of 20 year renewal periods. Um, so, that has uh, pretty much unlimited life if we can redo it indefinitely. We capitalize the acquisition cost and no amortization of that. You know, if we if we have a product um, that no we can no longer sell, then of course we'd have to uh, write off that trademark, the cost of acquiring it.
franchise doesn't license a contractual arrangement between a franchisor and a franchisee. Examples here are Shell, Taco Bell, or Renorec. Uh, to franchise uh, with a limited life should be amortized to expense over life of the franchise. Franchise with an indefinite life should be carried at cost and not amortized. So we pay X amount to get the license to run a Burger King. And if that license is just for a certain period, then we go ahead and expense it over the life of the uh, agreement. Otherwise, we'd uh, capitalize it and not amortize it. Goodwill. Uh, Goodwill is always a funny asset, uh, but it includes exceptional management skills, uh, desirable location, uh, good customer base, skilled employees, high quality products, etc. Only recorded when an entire business is purchased. And Goodwill is recorded as the excess of purchase price over the fair market value of the identifiable net assets acquired. FMV is fair market value. Internally created goodwill should not be capitalized. So we want to we want to buy a business. Um, business is worth a million dollars, but the individual assets only total up to eight hundred thousand. So in this case, we'd be paying an extra two hundred thousand for the uh, goodwill. So R&D cost uh, frequently results in something in company patents or copyrights such as new product, process, formula, literary work. All R&D costs are expense when incurred. Um, so here's some uh, presentation on the balance sheet. We're showing timber Owendale, Illinois. We're showing timberlands at cost less accumulated depletion. Building and equipment at cost, less accumulated depreciation. Then we have a total property, plant, and equipment. Intangibles would be patents. This companies usually show natural resources under property, plant, and equipment and show intangibles separately. Um, we do some asset turnover ratios if we want to compare different companies. In this case, we're taking net sales. And dividing it by the average total assets, we find average total assets assets by taking the beginning assets, adding it to the ending assets, and dividing it by two. And then divide net sales by that result. So here the asset turnover ratio is 0.56 times. Each dollar invested in assets produced 0.56 in sales. If a company is using its assets efficiently, each dollar of assets will create a high amount of sales. So the higher that ratio is, the better. Exchange of plant assets. Uh, ordinarily, companies record a gain or loss on the exchange of plant assets. The rationale for recognizing gain or loss is that most exchanges have a commercial substance. An exchange has commercial substance if the future cash flows change as a result of the exchange. So if... Uh, People do all kinds of bizarre things to avoid income taxes. And one of the things they'll do is get involved in some uh, exchanges that don't necessarily make a lot of economic sense. From an accounting point of view, this would have to have some commercial substance before we'd recognize the gain or loss. And they say if a commercial substance means that a future cash flows change because of the exchange. So, example here, Roland Company exchanged old trucks. They cost $64,000. They had $22,000 of accumulated appreciation. Exchange the old trucks plus cash to $17,000 for a new semi truck. The old trucks had a fair market value of $26,000. So, here's the calculations. Cost of the old truck, $64,000. Less accumulated appreciation means there's a book value. The forty-two thousand um, dollars. The old trucks had a fair market value twenty-six thousand, so we have a sixteen thousand dollar loss on the uh, exchange. We take a look at the to figure out the value of the new trucks. We take the fair market value of the trucks we traded in 
plus the 17,000 cash that we paid to come up with 43,000. Now, just on this in this example, you would have to update depreciation if if you weren't doing this at the end of the year, as we did with our earlier uh, trade-ins. So here's the journal entry to record it. Debit semi truck forty three thousand. Debit accumulated depreciation twenty two. Debit loss sixteen. Credit used truck sixty four. Get it off the books and then credit cash for seventeen thousand. Debits equal credits. Another illustration. Mark Express Delivery trades its old delivery equipment costs forty thousand less twenty eight in accumulated depreciation for new delivery equipment. The old equipment had a fair market value of nineteen thousand, and Mark paid an extra three thousand dollars in cash. So we run through the calculations here, and we find we have a gain of seven thousand. Cost the old equipment cost forty less accumulated depreciation means we're carrying on the books for twelve thousand. Fair market value is nineteen thousand, so we have a seven thousand dollar gain. Figure out the cost of a new asset. We look at the uh, fair market value of the old plus the cash that we paid, and it comes up with twenty-two thousand. So here's our journal entry: debit delivery equipment new twenty-two thousand, debit accumulated depreciation twenty-eight, credit delivery equipment forty, credit gain on disposal of seven, and credit cash for three. So that's the uh, highlights of the chapter on fixed assets. Uh, most of it's pretty straightforward. You do have to remember that uh, these transactions don't always happen on the first day of the year. Uh, and so that before we do something in the real world, we have to bring uh, depreciation up to date. For most small businesses, um, they're probably going to use a whole lot of the IRS rules when it comes to depreciation. And may have to, if, if they have published financial statements that get audited, we'll probably have to make some adjustments to that and get back to an acceptable depreciation method for uh, general accepted accounting principles. Study hard.